My role as survey coordinator on the project meant I had to use effective communication methods to communicate between the design team and survey team to deliver the survey programme and scope on time and to budget. I was responsible for understanding the needs of the design team and translating this in, across to the, the survey team. I had to use a range of effective communication methods to ensure this information and the needs of the design team were understood by the survey team. From this, I learned a range of methods are required to effectively communicate, as to use just one method will not allow all the information to be passed between the teams accurately. One of my jobs as a site engineer is to ensure quality control on site. I have to liaise between the works team and the clients team. Uh, my action is always to liaise uh, between them with a clear, straightforward way. Everyone is aware what it is expected uh, from uh, him or her, and the same goes for the client. They know exactly what to expect for us. Uh, that clear way of communication and invol of every involving everybody uh, on site led uh, to our works uh, to be at the best standard uh, possible that uh, the client was expecting from us. Every time, uh, the, uh, most of the job uh, I do is uh, safety critical jobs uh, on site and uh, safety critical jobs there will be machines, plant, uh, plant operators and uh, other people working around me. And uh, most of the time I will be the lead person and I have to brief all my colleagues regarding the job what I am um, going to undertake. Uh, especially to the machine controllers, uh, the machine operators and uh, other safety people around me. They should know, they should be aware about the job what I am going to do. So before commencing any job, I will do a, the task briefing which will explain the exact job what I am going to perform in that uh, safe uh, area which has been provided. On one of my previous projects, I had to arrange the decommissioning of an old water main. Um, part of the communication I went through to enable these works was to create a three-weekly look-ahead programme where I determined which dates the shutdown would go ahead to enable my public relations team to notify those that would be affected. Um, in doing this, I also highlighted the resource that I would need to enable the works to go ahead and determined um, what needed to be done prior to the shutdown, such as testing, chlorination and water sampling from the main. Um, by monitoring progress and communicating with my subcontractors and other members of the team, I was able to confirm all this had gone ahead and then confirm the shutdown um, went ahead as planned. I fulfil the standard uh, as a STEM ambassador uh, for schools and for colleges. So I go into local schools and colleges and represent the ICE on careers days. I also help in math lessons in local schools and colleges uh, and we teach, help teach Pythagoras and trigonometry through the use of roof trusses. There's quite a common shape and common uh, design that we do in our in our day-to-day -day career. This puts Pythagoras and trigonometry in a real world situation where cuts out the dreaded question of when am I ever going to use this in real life uh, and I think it's a really useful thing to take something that's technical in my day-to-day -day career and uh, teach it to school children and make something that's in the classroom in real life. We might even inspire some of them to become civil engineers. I hold regular staff forums with my team that include supervisors, and engineers. I also have uh, hold or do briefings with, a, with the site workforce to discuss issues around health and safety, quality and the ongoing development of the project. This is a great way of interacting with people on site and it builds a great relationship on a job that may last for a number of years.